hey, hey, part four, abnormal psychology, mood disorders. So first of all, a mood disorder, as you've probably started to see, hopefully, is that it's when and that something is extreme, right? So it's characterized by extreme emotional uh, tendencies. So really, really high, really, really low. We normally, every single person throughout our entire lives, we have really high emotions, really low emotions. It's the problem happens when they stay there for longer periods of time. So more specifically, uh, major depressive disorder, depression, uh, has to occur in the absence of drugs and no other medical conditions. All right, so you're not going to get um, diagnosed as depressed, major depression disorder, if you're on uh, drugs because that has to be naturally occurring. Um, and then it's for major depression, it's two or more weeks with significantly depressed moods. Um, you're also going to have feelings of worthlessness. So worthlessness, worthlessness, um, and diminished and low interest in most activities. So you're you have feelings of worthlessness, depressed moods, low interest or pleasure in most activities. Um, one kind of way to look at it is, or to kind of get a feeling for what being majorly depressed might be, um, is to, if you've ever been jet lagged, right, where you have this complete really lack of sleep, or your body, your circadian rhythm is just way off, and you just feel really, really sluggish, okay? So you're really, really sluggish, and you're, you're really, really sad. So imagine when you were really, really sad and really, really sluggish, and that's kind of combined for an extended period of time is what you may, may be an accurate feeling for being majorly depressed. Um, mania, on the other hand, is kind of the opposite. Mania is marked by hyper, uh, hyperact, hyperactive, oops, and then it's wildly optimistic okay so it's hyperactive and you're wildly optimistic so you're way up here you require very little sleep you um, are less in inhibited in lots of parts of your life you feel like you have lots of energy um, so it's just an extreme high um, these are by the way this is John Hamm right he's the guy in Mad Men he uh, has been uh, diagnosed with depression in the past and these three, this is Winston Churchill, right, led England through World War II. This is Teddy Roosevelt, um, one of the United States' greatest presidents. And this is Jim Carrey, who's hosting SNL on Saturday, so make sure you watch it. Go back and uh, check your DVRs if you're watching this late. And um, they've all had bipolar disorder, which we'll talk about next. And so bipolar disorder is uh, alternates it alternates between depression and mania right used to be called manic depressive so um, they don't call it this anymore but you still may hear it called manic depressive so if you look over here at this chart normally so this is so between these red lines here this purple line here, this is normal, like every human day stuff. You have good times and bad times, and you go up and down, up and down, up and down throughout your life and throughout your day, even. Right? This would be right in the middle, just kind of even, Stephen. Um, what happens is, is that when you stay down here for a long period of time, that's when you're depressed. But if you go down, way down here, dip down in here, and then go way, 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 way up here. And then way, 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 way down here, um, that's when you're starting to get uh, be bipolar. Another thing is that um, in bipolar, you spend actually probably more time in the depressed state than you do in your mania state. Right? And so lots of artists and um, writers have been di diagnosed with bipolar disorder, maybe post after they've already dead, 
because um, they've had lots of this creative energy while they're in their mania state. And so while they're up here, they're getting a lot done. And so uh, Vincent Van Gogh, artist, had uh, bipolar disorder, right? And so it's um, for the arts, you know, a lot of famous artists have been, you know, diagnosed with this. And just some of their greatest work came out when it's up here. There's research to show you're um, a lot more creative when you're in your mania state with bipolar disorder. So um, to understand some of these mood disorders, uh, just a few things I wrote down. Many behavior and cognitive changes accompany depression. So you, your thinking changes and your behavior changes when you have major depression. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is depression is widespread. Um, lots of people have depression. So if you have it or you feel like you have it or somebody you know has this, it's not like some, you're not isolated. There's lots of people who experience this. Um, one thing that I just will jump ahead here, most depressive ep episodes self-terminate. So if you do happen to have been in a, a little state of depression, they, they most of them self-terminate. Remember, two or more weeks long is the uh, classification for um, major depression. Um, compared with men, women are twice as vulnerable to major depression, so women have to be even more careful of this. Um, stressful events related to work, marriage, and close relationships often precede. So, right, so this is changes in your environment are affecting it, so it's not just your insides that are, are changing it. And um, with each new generation, this is, you know, kind of unsettling a bit. Depression is striking earlier, now often in your late teens, and affecting more people. It used to be that you didn't get depressed until... Later on in life, you see a lot more 20, late 20s, 30s, 40-year-olds getting depressed. Now we're starting to see quite a few uh, people in their late teens with major depression, which is unfortunate. So um, just kind of keep these things in mind. It's widespread. It's women have a uh, higher tendency to have it. Um, they usually self-terminate. And um, if you are going to have it, if they don't terminate quickly, you're likely to have another episode within two years or so. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. And then also, you know, these stressful situations at work, if, if you're susceptible to it, marriage, close relationships, this is something to be aware of to, stay, uh, to try to avoid these types of situations so that you can um, stay healthier. All right, and we'll see you back here for the next part. Thanks.